Welcome to this time of worship for St Andrew's Uniting Church here in the beautiful Sunbury. Whether you are someone who worships regularly with us or connecting with us for the very first time, welcome to all of you. By the mysteries of the Spirit of God, we are joined together in a rich communion. While the restrictions that have been necessarily uh, put in place for the safety of our community are beginning to be eased and relaxed, we are yet a virtual community of God's real people who are united and connected by the mysteries of the Spirit of God, God's most wonderful gift to us that Jesus told us he would send as he gathered with his disciples in that upper room the night before his arrest and crucifixion. This morning we will be including a time of Holy Communion and if you haven't previously organised some bread and some wine um, to be ready for when we come to that point in our service you might like to pause this service now and collect those things and have them ready so that you can just flow into that time with us as we come to it. Today is the sixth Sunday of the Easter season. We are taking this time to engage in worship. But before we go further, perhaps it's appropriate that we do pause as we start and ponder what is it that we worship? Now that seems to be the question that the Apostle Paul asks of us throughout his address to the philosophers and the thinkers, the intelligentsia of his society gathered in debate on, in the Areopagus in Athens. And we'll read that story this morning from Acts 17. So perhaps we should quickly self-check ourselves as to what it is that we come to engage as we participate in this time of worship. While I enjoy the beauty and the scents of the plants in our garden, seeing in them something of the beauty of the Creator and of all that the Creator has made, they are not God. God is within and beyond. While I enjoy the social interactions I have with Maggie, and I see in those social interactions something more of the characteristic and the nature of the Creator. That is not God. God is within and beyond. And as I ponder the creative imagination that sets humans apart from the rest of the creation and see that as further evidence of the characteristic and the nature of the God who created us in God's own image, we are still not God. God is within and beyond. Nevertheless, our God is present with us, paradoxically both within and beyond. And so we pray together as we commence our worship, 
God of all creation. Out of your being all things were made, yet in all things your being is uncontained. Help us to see you within all things, within all people. Help us to know that you are beyond our understanding, beyond our imagining, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. Eternal and ever blessed God, we give you thanks for the joy that comes when we gather to worship together and are truly united as the people of God. We thank you for the family of faith, united in our desire to follow Jesus. Thank you for those with whom we have laughed, who have made this world a more cheery place. Thank you for those with whom we have wept and with whom we have shared our sorrows in our times of need. We bless you for those we have served alongside, sharing together in a common task, whose support has made the work more manageable. We bless you for those who have shared our dreams and pursued our visions as partners in a common purpose, working to an agreed goal. Thank you for those with whom we worship together, for those with whom we pray together, for those in whose company we have listened to your voice and sought to see your you face to face. Forgive us for everything that has interrupted the companionship we should enjoy. For selfishness that made us want nothing but our own way. For intolerance which made us see nothing but our own point of view. For self-assertiveness that made us seek to impose our own will upon others. Have mercy, good Lord. Forgive us for arguments in which we lost our temper, for discussions in which bitter words and sarcastic comments were thrown around, for things we said in the heat of the moment and now bitterly regret. Have mercy, good Lord. So cleanse and purify us, for in the days to come we will work to live in unity with one another because we are one in Christ. Hear this our prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Reading from the Book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 22 to 31. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God, and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said. For we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I read the other day of a, of a mum who was getting her three kids all buckled into the back seat of her car and was starting to back out of her driveway when the youngest of her children screamed out at her really loudly, Stop! And she slammed on the brakes and she looked around in sheer panic, wondering what it was that, that had happened that she hadn't seen. But she couldn't see anything. She said, What? What is it? And the little girl said to her, you nearly ran over Boopsie. Now, Boopsie was an invisible friend. She got over it really quickly because Boopsie moved out of the road fairly quickly, but I can tell you, Mum's heart rate um, took somewhat longer to resettle. And it got me pondering this subject of invisible friends. When I read Paul's uh, Time in the Areopagus as he was debating with all of those people in the Areopagus that gathered there who thought they were the smartest, cleverest, most um, superior people in the world and Paul started talking to them about this living God, this tomb to the unknown God that they couldn't see. Um, were they thinking that Paul was, hadn't grown up out of his childhood and still had some invisible friend? Now they tell us that Two out of every three children uh, have imaginary friends in their lives. They are very real. And I'm assured that they grow out of healthy, active imaginations. Giving children a, a great way to express their feelings and a playmate to practice their social skills with. Coming in all shapes and sizes, some of them modelled on someone the child already knows, some of them are, are, are characters that have abilities that the child doesn't have, some of them are just figments of the child's imagination. But they play an important role in children's life. Sometimes they're just a friend that will listen to them that is exclusively theirs. Someone who plays with them, someone he doesn't judge them. So they play a particularly positive role in a child's life. In fact, children with make-believe friends are often found to be much more imaginative than children who don't. 
Now, some people probably accuse us Christians of having an imaginary friend when we talk about the risen Christ and the spirit, the advocate that's been sent to us. Of course, we can't see the presence of God in our lives in a physical way, but we can certainly see the effect of having the spirit of God make the risen Christ very real to us. It has a much more evident impact than all the other efforts to glam up our existence. Now, I've got this glass here because I, it's not because I'm thirsty, but I thought I might demonstrate some of this, because some of us have all sorts of shiny, glittery things in our lives that we try and add and think it's going to make a big deal. Well, that didn't make... just float on the top. That's not very exciting at all. Oh, well, let's put that aside. We'll, we'll try something else. How about, how about some glitzy stars? Sure, that's going to make life it. No. That's just useless. But if we add something that we can't see in our lives, whoa, look at that. Oh, look out, I might be in trouble. The Sue told me, better do that outside, and of course I'm doing it inside. We can see it permeate the whole of our life. Oh, let's put some more in. Have some more fun. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. And it feels like it's going flat for a while. You throw a bit more and away she'll go again. It's like that with the presence of the risen Christ in our lives. That creates a real difference throughout our lives. That's very evident to everyone who watches. So our friend might be invisible, but the effect of Jesus' presence in our lives demonstrates that the presence is not imaginary. Our life changes when we have Jesus in it. When we love Jesus even a little, our lives are filled with delight in a way that all the glitter and all the glitz in the world can never compare with. In that vein, I share with you this verse entitled My Invisible Friend, the author is unknown. I have a friend you cannot see, a friend that only I know, a friend who's with me every day, no matter where I go. I have a friend who understands the way I am today, a friend who always speaks the truth, no matter what I say. I have a friend who's always there, who stays with me each day, a friend who never runs away with someone else to play. I have a friend who is sent from God, who never lets me down. He teaches me of Jesus here and God of heaven above. I have a friend that loves me wherever I might be. He is the Holy Spirit of God who came and set me free. You might like to pause this service now to take a moment and quietly Imagine ways you can feel God near you. You might like to find some paper and some pencils or textures and to draw or to write about some ways God's Spirit is always here. Some of our drop-in friends share with us now a reading based on John chapter 14, reading verses 15 to 21. Friends, Jesus said, I will not always be with you. We know. We know. 
the disciples grumbled. They never liked to think about the fact that Jesus was not always going to be with them. They loved being with him. His stories he told them about God, the ways he touched other people's lives, and the way he made them well was so comforting. And the things Jesus taught made so much sense. How on earth would they get along without him? I will not always be with you, Jesus said again. And yet I will. It confused them even more. Whatever did Jesus mean? I won't be with you, but I will. But then they noticed Jesus had a twinkle in his eye. Whenever they saw that, they knew he was going to teach them something new. I will be gone soon, Jesus said. But I'll always be with you, because God's Spirit is always with you. God's Spirit has been here right from the beginning. Remember, in the creation story, how God's Spirit hovered over the waters? God is never, ever far away. God is right here. So when I am gone and you are not sure about things, stop for a moment. Pause in the midst of whatever you are doing and think about me. Think about God. Talk to one another. Remember what I have taught you. And sure enough, you will realize that God is with you and God will help you find answers to your questions. The disciples relaxed a little, but Jesus could tell they were still a little uncertain. You won't see me, Jesus said. But when you look inside your heart, you will see that I never left. Somehow, even though they couldn't quite put it into words, they understood what Jesus meant. What a difference a week makes. This time <clears throat> last week, we were still being asked to observe very strict physical distancing measurements. This week, those restrictions have begun to be eased. And aren't we delighted to be, we hope and pray, on the upward journey from the worst of these requirements? Last week, we heard about those readying themselves to stone Stephen to death, laying their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. This week, he has a new name and he's mixing it with the intelligentsia of society, debating in the uh, Areopagus in Athens, filling in the gaps of their religious and philosophical thinking. He has prepared himself by spending time observing carefully the contemporary popular socio-religious culture noting how all of their thinking and all of their religious observance was focused on physical, tangible objects. And he has discovered amongst all of their objects of worship a shrine to the unknown God. They were covering all their bases, it seems. And Paul used that conviction, that observation, to tell them about this God that they did not yet know. He told them of the intimate connection that exists between this benevolent God above all other gods, who has adopted them as children in God's own family. And he calls on them to live lives appropriate to this new understanding, this new insight of life befitting being children of the living God. This God that Paul spoke of, it must have sounded to his debating colleague surely like an invisible friend. And if we read on in the following couple of verses 
uh, we discover that some of them did indeed scoff at such a ridiculous notion and walked away. But some did pay attention and joined the movement. During this time of restricted movement required by the coronavirus, the idea of having an invisible friend has been particularly poignant for us to grasp and to appreciate. Particularly for those of us who may have been isolated by ourselves, alone in an empty house. To know that we have an invisible friend has been a most positive factor in our lives, as positive as any child's invisible friend could ever be. Because this is something real, something that we can observe the evidence of in this companion. When Jesus' disciples were very troubled by the thought of him no longer being there, experiencing feelings of abandonment and loss, of despair and grief, he told them that he wasn't exactly abandoning them at all. In this life, he was limited in his physical life to one place at one time but he was going to send them another comforter, an advocate, the spirit, who would walk alongside each of them, each of us, everywhere and always. That is the most marvelous gift that I hope we have been appreciating during this time of physical distancing. Surely this is the ultimate insight into the fact that physical distancing does not equate to social distancing. And especially does it not equate to spiritual connection. Remarkably, this advocate is who Jesus has already been for his disciples guiding, teaching, reminding, abiding, witnessing, interceding, comforting. What the disciples had known in Jesus and what they feared losing in his impending absence, he was assuring them they would always know in the promise of the paraclete, the word that's used in the original language that doesn't readily translate into any single English word. The wonderful thing is that Jesus promised this spirit, this paraclete, this advocate, this comforter, this whatever word we choose to use, just when the disciples, just when we are most in need of pastoral care. There are a few mentions of the Spirit throughout John's Gospel, but it is now when the disciples are fearing abandonment and they are experiencing distress and most uncertain around what the future holds, that the promise of the presence of this invisible friend into that future is so vital. And it's now that it's offered. And I will ask the Father and he will give you an advocate to be with you forever, Jesus says. So simple, really. The Spirit will be our constant, invisible friend. In these strange times when a new world order is rearranging itself on the planet and settling in, as Sabrina or Mark described it in the Paris Review. I love that description of it. In this strange time, isn't this kind of accompaniment exactly what we and many need? 
exactly what we need to embody for one another. The fundamental meaning of paraclete is the one who is called to be alongside others. But what becomes apparent is that when Jesus said this to his disciples, I am sending you another paraclete, it was not only a statement about his own ministry to them. It was also telling us an important principle of how we who would be his followers today should offer ourselves to one another and to others besides. We are called to be the invisible, ex sorry, called to be the visible expression of this invisible friend that we call the spirit to accompany one another. This kind of accompaniment is particularly necessary in times of vulnerability and fear and uncertainty. It's more than a ministry of presence, of, of just being there. This kind of accompaniment that Jesus is speaking of is a, is a true sense of an embodied divine pathos in those moments when people might be inclined to ask, is God really here? And this is God's big yes to such people asking such questions. And we are called to be God's yes to one another and to others in response to that question. It is not merely something we do. Rather, we are invited to embody for one another in such moments who Jesus was for his disciples and then who the Spirit was and is for we believers, both then and now. We are called to embody accompaniment to commit to accompaniment and to do accompaniment because this was who Jesus was and who Jesus calls us to be followers in doing and being. Accompaniment is so central to Jesus mission and vision in part because accompaniment is born out of relationship and thus maintains relationship. Relationship is what the life of the Christian is all about. Relationship and connection with our God and with one another. So let us enjoy the companionship of our invisible friend whatever name we might choose to call that friend. And let us be that kind of embodied companions to and for one another and others besides. Would you pray with me? Wonderful risen Christ, thank you for the wondrous gift we could ever hope for in giving us the paraclete your spirit, making yourself present to us throughout life. Help us, we pray, to be similarly companions for one another and others besides, embodying the presence of the Divine One everywhere and always. Amen.
prayers of the people. Let's pray. God, our Creator, we have gathered here to praise and worship you because there are times when we have sensed your love surrounding and upholding us. Your Holy Spirit, our loving companion, has walked beside us through celebration and grief, a gentle, constant reminder of your presence. We are so grateful that restrictions on social interactions are beginning to ease. We think of the blessing this will be for schools, for those in aged care facilities, and for the very isolated and vulnerable elderly. God, whose very being is love, we commit ourselves to be your church together, knowing that you will not abandon us or leave us orphaned, but will be our sustainer forever. We commit ourselves to be a community that shows forth your abiding love to those who have felt abandoned by this world. And so we pray for those who are grieving and seeking a new way forward, for those who are experiencing housing insecurity, hunger or food insecurity, for those with health concerns, mental or physical, that keep them isolated or unable to live into the fullness of who they could be, for those who have been rejected by their families or communities, for those who have been blamed or shamed by those who were supposed to give support or accountability, for those who are living with violence and trauma as part of their daily lives. Holy God, we know that the hurts of this world are not what you want for us. We know that you are with us, our comfort and consolation even in hard times. Help us to come alongside each other as well. We think of those in our church family we hold before you. Joan, Pat O'Meara, Pat Bond, Ruth and her family. And we also pray for those friends and neighbours known to us personally. We hold them up to you, knowing you care deeply. Help us to be the tangible presence of your Holy Spirit, the hands and feet of your love to those around us. Help us, O God of grace, to learn to love each other unconditionally as you have loved us. And so we pray together the prayer Jesus taught his followers to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you our thanks and praise, O God. The world and everything in it was made by you. Life and breath are your gifts to all mortal things. And in you we live and move and have our being. Everywhere and always, you have been within our reach and have inspired us to search for you. In Jesus the Christ, you have shown yourself to us, the unknowable revealed in the known. He was rejected and put to death in the flesh, 
but you raised him from the dead and gave him life in the spirit. Through his resurrection, you have raised us from the waters of baptism and now your blessing abides with us even in suffering and your spirit assures us of your coming justice. Therefore, with the saints and the angels throughout time and across the face of the earth, we join our voices in the eternal hymn, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We have read part of the story from the night of Jesus gathered in that upstairs room with his disciples the night before his arrest and crucifixion. As he spoke to them of what lay ahead and lifted up to God his hope and his prayer that they would stay united and strong, he took bread, prayed an ancient blessing over it, then he broke it. And he shared it with them saying, this is my body broken for you as you eat it. Remember me. Then as the meal concluded, he took the cup one more time. Again, prayed an ancient blessing over it. And he shared it with them, saying, This is my blood poured out that you may have life. As you drink it, remember me. As we receive these simple things of bread and wine with glad and grateful hearts by mysteries beyond our comprehension God makes God's self present to us nourishing our faith and calling us afresh to join his ministry of love and mercy and grace that the world might know that Jesus was sent by God to save us all and lead us to abundant life in the Spirit of God. Friends of Jesus, eat and drink, and may your hearts be joyful and your response to Christ's call be renewed. To the body of Christ. Amen. blood of Christ. The body of Christ broken for me. His blood shed for me. Amen. So then let us pray together. What can we say, Lord God, but our heartfelt thank you for all you have done for we your children. May we know you may we show our thanks in the lives we live. To your honour and glory we pray. Amen. So we come to the close of our worship again this morning. As we prepare to conclude our time of worship, let us move on from this point with our eyes and our ears and our hearts wide open to the movement of the Holy Spirit swirling all around us. Let us go out from here prepared to see our God even in the most unexpected and perhaps even surprising places and circumstances and people. 
Let's remember that God will not leave us, even though we might move on from this time of worship. So go and reflect the welcome of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, whose heart closes no one out, but whose love is there for us all, always. So may the love of God, the peace of Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit abide with you now and always. May the love of God, the peace of Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit abide within you and beyond you today and always. Amen.